Today, we're taking a look at the Bellman CX25P Espresso Maker. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Artistic YouTube channel where we guide you through all things coffee. So you don't miss out on any of our latest videos, hey, make sure you do subscribe and hit that bell icon and you'll get notified when we pop up our latest video. And if you've got any questions, hey, leave them below. We do love answering uh, all those wonderful questions from you. So today we are looking at the Bellman CX25 um, Espresso Maker. Um, it is a pretty cool little device, been around for a little bit. Um, I've had the pleasure of using one um, quite a bit camping. So I just wanna share with you uh, how to brew on it, a um, couple of the cool features, and hopefully you can decide whether this is the right product for you when you're traveling next. So what is the Bellman CX25? Well, it's a bit of a take on a typical um, mocha pot as of how it brews, but it actually allows you to control the flow of the coffee into your cup. And then it does have a steamer as well. So it's kind of a two-in-one um, brewing device. It is like a typical mocha pot where we're gonna have the water and it's gonna um, percolate up through the coffee grinds, but it does have a control knob so you can basically um, increase or decrease your espresso into your cup. Once you're brewing, you're actually then gonna create steam. So you've got an amazing steamer on the other side. So you'll be able to froth that beautiful velvety textured milk that you wanna to add to your espresso and essentially have a cappuccino or a latte wherever you travel to. So it's a really cool device. There's a couple of interesting features about it is that it does have a gauge, which is gonna give us an idea of what the temperature of the water is for when it's brewing through the coffee. And then also that's gonna to increase to show us how much steam pressure we're gonna to have to work with. Um, we've got a safety valve on the back here behind the handle. Um, and essentially, yeah, it pulls apart quite easily, allowing you to brew some coffee. So let's give it a go. The unit itself does come like this. You do get a small pack of paper filters, which you'd pop onto your coffee bed. Um, and there is a guide or a book that tells you about some of the measurements as well. So there are some, um, some great other recipes to look at. I'll just give you a bit of a rough idea on the measurements that the machine has. So you will be able to take it home and make a brew, but definitely look, changing the flavor of the, the, the actual coffee and the espresso is pretty easy with all the accessories it comes with. So let's take a good look inside. Um, before we take these off, the knobs are clearly marked, which is open and closed. That's a really great tip um, so that you do uh, increase and decrease your steam or your espresso quite easily. So we undo the top nut here and remove essentially our top brewing chamber essentially for it. So once we look inside the machine, we do have um, basically um, it's a level guide. It allows us to change the amount of coffee that we're gonna have. So if you don't put this in place, this is your standard amount of coffee, a larger amount, which is actually gonna take 50 grams of coffee. If you pop in your basket with the flat side down, essentially you can put 30 grams of coffee in. If you want a lighter brew, you'd flip that over, pop it in, and then you can put 15 grams of coffee. So just to be clear, when you're putting the coffee in, your coffee has to sit on top of this bed, not underneath it, and you're squashing it down. So what we'd be doing is filling up the, the base reservoir with some water. And you'll see inside, there are actually a couple of marks in here. There's a three, a six, and a nine. So that is how much water is gonna pass through the coffee. Now, you can't fill it past nine because essentially you won't have any room to be able to create steam. So don't think more water is gonna be better in this scenario. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna use the three mark, which will give me about 150 mil of liquid through my espresso, giving us a really nice, rich uh, flavor for then us to add the milk into it. So that recipe is gonna be at 150 mil of water through 50 grams of finely ground coffee. So what I have here is actually some pre-boiled water just to speed things up a little bit. And I'm gonna fill that up to, as I said, the three mark. And that's gonna make it a bit quicker for us in this whole extraction process. Here we go. So I've got my water in there at the mark of three. I'm just gonna get this kettle out of the way to give me a bit of space. And now I'm gonna load my 50 grams of fine coffee into the large filter basket. And you can see there is a hole there and that will essentially just fall straight through. So pop your finger over the top and you can start to dose that coffee in, give a bit of a tap 
and just turn it around and that'll allow you to get all that coffee in nicely. Now again, this is the largest amount of coffee with the smallest amount of water. So I am gonna be getting a nice rich brew out of this one. Couple of taps just to get that coffee down. Now with any coffee, you do need to make sure that you've got a nice even coffee bed. So if you had something just flat to be able to distribute that, or you could again use your finger just to move that coffee around a bit. Great, so we've got our um, 50 grams of coffee in there ready to go. Now I'm gonna use this just to push down and give it a light little tamp. And that's gonna allow us to get a bit of back pressure onto that extraction and increase the flavor. The paper filter needs to be placed on top and that helps the grind so they don't go up into the top chamber. We're gonna pop this in. It just sits in nicely like that. We're gonna place on our top and it's opposite to the handle. Makes it a bit easier for when you're going to take your espresso into your cups. Now you want that to be nice and tight because it is gonna be a pressure vessel. So just keep going till it's firm. Get your gas on. Now if you can use a gas burner like this, make sure that flame isn't coming up and around the sides. So you might just want to reduce that a little bit if you're using naked flames. And you don't really want to use this straight on a campfire. You'd really need to use it on a hot plate that has some coals underneath uh, and that will work with this kind of unit. There are plastic parts up the top that you don't want to melt and it is great on an induction cooker as well. So the unit's all sealed, everything's all turned off. And what we're looking for now is for that gauge just to increase up to about 1.5 um, to one bar. Now at that point, we'll be able to start extracting our coffee. So because this is a little bit high, I'm just gonna pop a cup here and then it'll allow me to have basically a, a rest. Oh, there you go, so that I can get our espresso. Now we did start with pre-boiled water, so it is a lot quicker to be able to do this process. Um, but if you are starting from cold water, this will probably take about three, maybe four minutes, depending on your heat source, to actually boil that water. So the gauge is now starting to rise up. It's up to about 0.4 of a bar. So we're starting to get close where that heat is actually going to push that water up through the coffee bed. So I'm gonna wait until it gets to the one bar uh, to be able to open up the tap and get the extraction that I'm after. Okay, so we're almost at one. I'm just gonna reposition the unit. And I'm gonna open the valve now and start to get that coffee to come through. You can hear the actual water coming up through now. It does take about 10 seconds for it to come through. So you can just adjust that to get your different amounts of coffee. So you can actually turn off the stream, pop on another cup and get a second extraction there as well, which is fantastic. I'm just gonna let a bit of that steam out. There you go, nice beautiful espresso there. I'm gonna turn it off the heat now. And we've got enough espresso there and there's plenty of steam in that machine to be able to froth up for the two next cups. So I'm just gonna bring this over here. Give us a little bit of space. And we'll get to the purge just to get some of that wet steam out. Nice constant little hiss just to make sure 
you're getting that microphone. Once you've got your foam, lift the jug back up so that there's no hiss and keep that spinning until you get to the temperature that you're after. So 65 degrees is what you're after for a nice cafe style temperature. Here we go. Give it a little wipe because you want to keep that steam tip nice and clean. A little purge there to get that milk out. And we've got our silky smooth milk here ready to pour into our espresso. get a bit more milk. We should have enough steam to do another one. Ooh, that's a bit hot. Just watch the edge of the, the pot there when you're frothing. It's actually a lot of steam pressure here. I'm very impressed with it to be honest and you can get a good spin on that milk. Let your milk sit for a second. Again purge to get that milk out because it does suck back up. And here we go, ready for another one. And of course, Rosetta, but not amazing. But anyway, hey, that's what happens when you're on camera. So guys, I hope that helps you um, see how good the CX25P can be in making espresso and milk when you're out and about on a simple hot, um, hot burn or an element. Um, if you've got any question, guys, hey, leave a question down below. Thanks very much for watching. Have an awesome day.